Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is May 13th, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, the more individuals that carry guns legally in Texas, the safer our state becomes. The Lone Star State now has over 1 million people licensed to carry, and the crime rate is going down. We're not turning our guns in, and we're not running, and we're not backing down. If you want them, come and take them. Then, a viral video posted on YouTube shows the unbelievable length of a TSA security line at Chicago's Midway International Airport. Meanwhile, the borders remain wide open. And look who's responding to the fight for $15 an hour minimum wage hikes. Fast food chains are replacing workers with computers. All that plus much more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. I'm joined in studio now by Joe Biggs, and it is time for the News Blitz. Now, Joe, we have several articles to go over, top news of the day, top news of the week. And I want to start with this as we talk about the fight for 15 and people saying that they want a higher minimum wage. Now, my view of it, if you can convince the CEO of McDonald's or whatever to take a pay cut and let that trickle down to the employees, I'm fine with that. But the notion that you're going to raise wages by potentially raising the cost of your already crappy food and expecting the customer to shoulder that burden, I don't think is a very cost-effective way to think about it. And now we see that uh, Wendy's is actually replacing people with kiosks. So basically, when you go to Wendy's, there's going to be a, uh, a red box or some form of that at the cash register there to greet you. I actually wrote an article about this a little over two years ago. It's something I use to kind of help that I showed Alex is like, hey, I can write, things like that. And it's something I'm pretty passionate about because I think it's completely and totally ridiculous. At the end of the day, you've got so many small businesses that it's going to affect. Now, given, you know, Wendy's, places like this can kind of handle that. It's not going to hurt them so bad. But I, in my article, I wrote that either they go to the 15 and small businesses just go away because they're not going to be able to afford that, mm -hmm. or they're going to replace people with robots. Yes. And we're already seeing that in shipping departments and different companies around the country. We're seeing these robots that go around, move up with like a forklift, pick up a box that has a barcode on it, and it just goes by that barcode. The more we raise that up, the price is going to go up of food. The, the minimum wage is going to... The whole point is these jobs are meant for kids. Yes. You know, 16 to, to 22 you know, who are in college, they're, they're trying to find their way, they're trying to learn work skills, when to get up in the morning, you know, how to be on time, how to learn some kind of work ethic. It's not, to, it's not supposed to be a job that you provide for your family full time. Now, given there are some people that don't really have that many choices, but that's few, far, and, you know, it's, it's a small percentage. You know, this low wage at those jobs should motivate you to learn, go to a trade school. I mean, don't go become a psychologist. Who cares? We got enough of those guys. But learn welding and things like that that can actually be used. Electricians, we need those. We're going to need those if things go down. You know, so. Absolutely. I, yeah, I agree with that wholeheartedly. You know, my first job was bagging groceries for less than six bucks an hour. And I knew way back then at 16 years old, I don't want to do this as a career. Now, of course, you can move up to management and other things. But for the people who don't aspire to that, you go, you get your whatever. 10 bucks an hour, whatever it is now, and then you go to school or you go off to the military, you do something else till this is not your main career. Yeah, exactly. So I think it's bad to, to move it up. I mean, because really at the end of the day, like I said, it's going to be the small businesses. They're gonna, not going to be able to, to pay that out. And those guys are going to be affected. And that's who we need to be boosting up in our economy in America right now are these small businesses. And we need to promote that stuff. We need to have more products being made here. And we need to, I, I don't know, I just don't like it. And also for the people who want the $15 an hour, I understand you know, their financial issues and things like that, but you're pricing yourself out of a job. <laughs> so it, it's much cheaper for them but to hire But think about how much that, that Wendy's burger is right now, like a chicken sandwich from Wendy's, maybe like a buck fifty or something like yeah. that. You know, then you add the meal, the drink, the, the, the fake fries that have 19 ingredients in it. You know, you have cheap fake food. That's going to go up. Now mm -hmm. you're going to be paying like Whole Foods price for fake Whole food. Whole paycheck. For fake food. <laughs> and, and, you know, McDonald's today just announced that they're going to start using real beef. Oh, my God. Oh, my. But here's the thing, though. They're just now saying that it's real beef. This whole time, people are eating this, and you're just like, gah, 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 you know, yeah. it's just mush. 
It's like dead rats and cats and, you know, somebody's kitten. Silicone breast every, implants. Every time you drive down the road and you see that missing cat sign, like that's where your food's going. <laughs> yeah, the, the McDonald's food has not been the healthiest. And it, it's very interesting. Uh, if you go to other places around the world, they have different food standards. So I hear that you can go to a fast food restaurant, for example, in Europe, and the food is a higher quality. And when I was in Paris covering the attack that happened at the Bataclan Theater, I actually walked to a McDonald's a few blocks away because I was just curious because I heard that they actually use real ingredients, real food, and all that. So when you walk up to this McDonald's, there's these huge signs, these placards that say, you know, says no GMO, real beef patty, and explains what it is, you know, in French and English, real French fry, ingredient, potato. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and I'm like, my mind's blown because if I, you know, I did that protest at South by a year ago or whatever when I dressed yeah. up like Donald, Donald McDonald, McDonald. And we went around these flyers. He had 19 ingredients. I know we're kind of going on a tangent now, but still, though, like, it, it, that's important, though, yeah. that we should have real food. And we need, don't need to be paying people at McDonald's, Wendy's, $15 an hour, or, yes, you will be replaced by a robot. All right. Uh, Joe Biggs, what do you have in your stack? Well, I've got a couple things. Uh, Kardashian, author of Caitlyn's book, uh, says Faith could make her Bruce again. And I just find this interesting because they keep saying that, you know, she's like the superhero of America that, you know, and they're calling her her. Mm -hmm. That's a dude dressed like a lady. Yes. There's been no change made. There's been no snipping. Basically, he, he grew out his hair and put on lipstick. He's a drag queen. But yet we're told that these are heroes. And, and, and they're saying that, uh, you know, she's having this whole deal or he's having this whole gender struggle. And that because of faith, Mike switched back. So basically take off a dress, put on shorts and a tank top, go for a jog, maybe you want a decathlon, eat some Wheaties, and go back to being normal. Yeah, and, and that's kind of the deal. Like, so much attention has been given to this guy, and he himself seems to be very confused. He won Woman of the Year, which further proves men can do anything. <laughs> yeah, and, that, and that's one thing. And as you talk about this uh, Man of the Year, I know we're going off on some side deals here, but... I was very surprised that there weren't more women outraged by that. Like, he was like athlete of the year, a female athlete of the year, whatever it was. Yeah. And I'm like, well, where are all the women? Like, where's the ESPYs or something? Yeah. Something like that. I'm like, what about all these fantastic female athletes that we have that are not getting recognized because men are taking their awards? And now we're going to have men going into women's restrooms. It's a very confusing time it, in it, America. In it, I was talking to, um, to somebody about this. This just is a, truly the land of confusion. Yeah, I was talking to somebody about this a little bit earlier when we talked about these social justice warrior movements. I think people, they see the, uh, the struggles like the civil rights movement with uh, MLK and all that, and they so desperately want to be MLK that they are taking a completely almost parody approach to what he did and the people like him did, just not, not just here but all over the world, you know, Gandhi, whoever. And they're coming up with uh, these bathroom movements and banning cans of beer and all these things that have nothing to do with making your life better. It's just these uh, people trying to it's more dictate division. your life. Yeah, it's more division. All these social justice, uh, the social justice warriors, they do nothing but create more division, more hatred, more separation between our people. It's ridiculous. We should all be able to get along, but it's when safety is concerned. That's when my problem is with the bathroom, but we'll get to that in a minute. All right, now let's keep talking about safety. Here in the state of Texas, we have uh, concealed carry, we have open carry coming. Now we see that uh, Texas has one million licensed carry hand, handgun licensees walking around the state of Texas. Uh, Joe Biggs, I know you are a licensed carrier. Is this something that concerns you at all to know no. that there are people out there carrying these firearms? I, I feel safer, you know, especially when you look at the, the actual statistics involved, these licensed firearm carriers that go through these courses, they learn the responsibility. And when yes. you go to this class, the point of these classes are to scare you that if you screw up, if you make a bad choice, that's your butt on the line. You can go to jail for a long time. Absolutely. So people, criminals, they don't go through that. They don't understand or they don't care. That's why they're criminals. They don't care if they go to jail. But these guys who go through these courses, they understand the repercussions of what could happen if you pull that weapon at a wrong time, if you do it out of emotions and not out of actual uh, safety. safety. You know, there's, there's reports of people running around trying to pull guns and shoot bank robbers. You're not a police officer. Yes. You know, so we have more people who do the right thing that go through these courses versus those who don't. I agree. I have no issue with it because one of the arguments here in Texas was if we have open carry here, this is, you know, years ago before they passed the legislation. Uh, but if we have open carry here, we'll have, you know, the wild, wild west. People can run around, you know, I guess bring back their horses and be having shootouts in the street. 
And I'm from Oklahoma. We passed open carry, I believe, back in 2013. I go back to Oklahoma for, you know, vacation or Christmas or whatever. I've seen maybe two or three people open carrying outside of police officers. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, it's just that there's people out there that want to have that right. And we as Americans, we're, we're founded on liberty and freedom. Mm -hmm. We should have that right. And oh, I agree. I have the right, you know, I, I have the right to open carry. But guess what? I choose not to because I think that gives away my, my hand. Mm -hmm. I, I think open carrying with pistols is not a good thing personally due to what I've seen in combat and how that can give away my position and what I have to the enemy if there's someone that means to do harm. Yes. I'd rather have that concealed if someone's running through, you know, got a gun or whatever. I'm not a threat to him. But if he runs by and he has a gun and automatically sees it on the outside, who's he going to go for first? Me yes. and then take out the other people. So I believe that everyone should have the freedom to make their own decision. I just don't personally do it. I agree. All right. What else do you have? Well, this is something we actually covered a long time ago. There was a fire. Remember this fire that left 15 dead at a Texas fertilizer plant? Oh, yes. Was that in West? Uh, yeah, around Houston or something like that, oh, I believe. Oh, a different fire. Okay. Yeah, so back then, this was uh, April 17, 2013. Uh, the fire set off on one of the worst industrial disasters in Texas history. The deadly explosion of a fertilizer plant in West Texas that killed 15 people was intentionally set. Now, I know Rob Dude, Rob Jacobs, all these guys were talking about this back then and said they thought it was intentional, a false flag of so to say, and everyone started making fun of them, saying, oh, that's crazy, no, this was just an accident. And now here they are, you know, years later, three years down the road, and they're saying that it has been ruled intentional. So it's definitely something interesting to look into if you're uh, watching this right now to read about it. Absolutely, and as and it often happens, you know, you. If you're ahead of the curve, people just laugh at you, and then when they get up there to where you are, they're like, oh, okay. I mean, that's something we're seeing every day, though, here with our job, talking about, you know, how there's Saudi involvement with 9-11, and now it's mainstream news. It's on like, 60 Minutes. The same people who were mocking us years ago are now going, well, blah, 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 blah. You know, I've got a buddy, I'm not going to say his name on here, really big journalist, uh, writes for all kinds of people, you know, intercept all this stuff. And they used to laugh at me and make fun of me when I said that. And now they're writing articles about it. And I, I'll tweet them or whatever, like, huh, that's some conspiracy stuff, huh? You know, they just won't say anything, won't respond back. Yeah. You know, so it, it's amazing that we're able to kind of do this stuff. But then once it's proven, you don't get the credit. Absolutely not. You're still a conspiracy theorist, and they'll still try to throw that in your face. But we'll see what goes from here. Now, let's talk about going nowhere with the TSA. We have videos of... TSA, we travel quite a bit, you yes. more than myself. Uh, we've had many experiences with the TSA, and now we see they have massive lines. And they're saying the reasons for the massive lines is they don't have the proper funding to get the proper equipment. My retort to that is the reasons why you have these massive lines at the TSA checkpoints is because they're pulling people out of the lines to check their Altoid cans. This happened to me personally. The guy patted me down, he looked in my bag, it had all this camera equipment, I guess he thought it was a bomb or whatever. He pulls out a can of Altoids, opens it, jiggles it around, puts it back in the bag. My last trip to Eugene the other day with Darren McBreen, I'm walking through line, and the guy, like, as you finally go through this long, you know, hour-long, you know, snake line, mm -hmm. you get there, and there's this guy, he's got a dog, he's like, what's your purpose today? I was like, oh, go eat at my favorite little restaurant inside the terminal. And I was like, no, I'm getting on, a, on an airplane. What do you think? Why, would I, why else would I be at the airport today, dude? Like, did you think you were going to throw me off with that hard-hitting question? He's like, well, where are you going? I was like, to the other part of the country? To I America? Like, well, why does it matter? He's like, so how long are you going to be there? Is this for business or pleasure? I was like, it doesn't freaking matter. Like, why is any of that your business? And that is another thing they're doing that slows you down. I have power. I yeah. have power. And, and it's some... Donut chasing mental cases. Well, I mean, they, they hype these guys up and make them think that they're Captain America. They're I'm the like, guys who didn't get picked at dodgeball. They're the guys that got made fun of and got sent home because they couldn't run. They didn't do anything. And all they did was sit around and play with garbage pill kid cards all day or whatever. I'm sorry. That's what I'm it sorry. Is. I mean, I'm sure there are good people in TSA, but I haven't seen too many of them. <laughs> they, they just harass you. Uh, they they give all these ridiculous questions. I'm like, what please make are you sure you empty your pockets, uh, and they go through that same spiel over and over and over again. Like, all right, this isn't my first time flying. Okay, I got it. Yeah. And sometimes I snap. I'm like, I got it. I've been here 30 times. You even know my name. Stop telling me to check my pockets for keys. Absolutely ridiculous. Okay, 
Uh, what do you have in your stack there, Joe? Uh, well, three deaths linked to recent Navy SEAL training. So this is something that's really hot right now the, uh, at this point in time, because uh, yesterday I actually interviewed uh, Navy SEAL Carl Higby. Mm -hmm. In the military right now, we have this massive movement going around across the military in every branch. We're, we're bringing women into combat. We're putting women in combat leadership positions, and we're dropping and lowering standards where they shouldn't be. These that's are my issue seals. with it, you know, because a lot of people talk about uh, women in combat, and you know a lot more about that than I do, but if you have to lower the standards for anybody, whether it be male or woman, you have those high standards. I hear all the time about guys who are in the military, they wash out of SEAL school or whatever. It's a very high standard. You should not drop that standard for anybody, regardless of religion or sex or anything. Yeah, these standards have been created through trial and error over years and years of perfecting and, and working on these different uh, tactical training, you know, all this different stuff. They 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 figured out the right way to weed out a certain kind of person who could be in a certain special forces field, but then not be an elite seal. Mm -hmm. Like that's a whole nother level of sacrifice, a mental a mentality that you have to have. And when you lower that standard, it goes away. The seals aren't the seals anymore. They become you know, the, the bottlenose dolphins <laughs> or whatever. You know, like the the guppy fish or something like that. Like these guys are amazing because that standard is so high. And my fear from these three deaths linked to the recent Na uh, Navy SEAL training classes is that someone, these politically correct people who are now in our government at high levels that work you know, uh, you know, as officers, are gonna see this and go, see, see, we need to lower these standards too. And it's like, it's almost like the no child left behind for the military. If, hey, if you can get in there and you can do the job right, that's fine, but you shouldn't lower the standards and put other people's safety at risk. Thank you so much, Joe Biggs. All right, we'll be back right after this with more special reports. Richard Reeves with Infowars.com reporting to you from the Texas State Convention. It is Friday the 13th, and it is an unlucky day, but it's actually an unlucky day for Hillary. Hillary is in big trouble in Texas. If they ever thought they were going to turn Texas blue, they are completely wrong because the war cry here at the Texas State Convention yesterday was all about unity. Every major speaker every minor speaker was all about unifying the party. Plenty of Ted Cruz support here at the Texas State Convention, as one can imagine. Ted Cruz did win the primary here in Texas, so the cruisers are here, but they're already on board with Donald Trump. So if there were to be a second, third, fourth ballot, sub a subsequent ballot at the RNC in Cleveland, I am confident that those cruisers would still support Donald Trump. So. Lots of excitement here at Texas State GOP. They're all about Hillary cannot be president. Texas realizes, the delegates here at the convention realize that Hillary being president of the United States, four more years of the Obama agenda carried forth for another term would just be an absolute disaster. So the unifying factor is Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton are big time unifying factors for Texas GOPers. So good news for Donald Trump here, great news for Donald Trump, and incredible rhetoric about Article 5 conventions coming right out of Governor Abbott's mouth and Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick. Uh, years ago, back in 2008, if somebody would have talked about Article 5 convention going on, they would have looked at you like you had four eyeballs in your face. It would have been, you'd have thought, you'd have been thought to have been a heretic. So incredible rhetoric about that. Texas is ready to rebel. There's also even talk of secession on the platform that was being heard last night. It made it out of a temporary platform committee subcommittee uh, coming out of those meetings from Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and followed through into last night where the platform committee worked late into the night on different issues, including Article 5 convention, convention issues and secession issues about having a basically a non-binding vote by Texans about secession. So amazing news here uh, and the war cry here from the Texas State Convention is all about unity. So bad news for Hillary, bad news for the Obama agenda, and bad news for the globalists. We'll have following upcoming reports here on Infowars.com, so stay tuned. Richard Reeves out. There's not going to be a President Donald Trump. Um, that's not going to happen.
Uh, and it's not going to happen because we're not going to be used. Fear is not going to be something that we're going to, uh, that's going to be uh, the, what drives our country. We're not going to be scared of Muslims or, or, or immigrants or, you know, women. The worst thing about George Clooney isn't the unremitting bull that streams out of his mouth. It's the way he always acts as if he's got the moral high ground. You don't have the moral high ground. You're supporting one of the most corrupt politicians in generations. You're supporting a woman who took a hundred million dollars from Gulf state dictators. Countries responsible for some of the worst human rights abuses on the planet. You're supporting a woman who's in bed with Saudi Arabia, a country that bankrolled ISIS Al-Qaeda and was involved in 9-11. Trump is actually a, a, a result in many ways of the fact that much of the news programs didn't follow up and ask tough questions. That's the truth. Really? So if Trump wasn't asked hard questions, why do studies show that he got the most negative coverage out of any Republican candidate? You know, the ratings go up because they can show up empty podium saying Donald Trump is about to speak, mm. you know, as opposed to taking those 30 seconds and saying, well, let's talk about refugees, which is the biggest crisis that's going on in the world right now. OK, George, let's talk about the refugees, because it makes complete sense that you would throw your support behind Saudi Arabia's preferred candidate. You see, Clooney and the Saudis have a lot in common when it comes to refugees. They both whine and about refugees all day long while taking in precisely zero refugees. Saudi Arabia has 100,000 air-conditioned tents with bathroom and kitchen facilities that can house 3 million people sitting empty for most of the year. How many Syrian refugees have the Saudis taken in? None. George Clooney visits Angela Merkel to lecture Europe about how they're not doing enough for Muslim migrants, despite accepting millions of them over the past year. How many Syrian refugees has George Clooney taken in? None. Zero. Nada. Zilch. The guy's got five frigging mansions, three of which are in Europe. He's just bought another one in Britain for 10 million pounds. Clooney and his wife have got room for a new swimming pool, a home cinema, a library, a steam room, a spa, a gym, a wine cellar, and eight empty bedrooms. But no room for any refugees. So Clooney, when are you gonna do your bit for the refugees you care so deeply about? Or is this just one long, tiresome exercise in virtue signaling? Hmm, I wonder. How dare you lecture Germans about accepting more refugees from the comfort of your $100 million Lake Como Villa. While people in villages like Sumte, with a population of little over 100, are inundated by 750 unassimilated Muslim migrants. We've lost the ability to, to get to and tell the truth and get to the facts. Seriously, this is a guy who throws $350,000 a plate fundraisers for Hillary and then has the nerve to get on TV the next day to complain about getting big money out of politics. This is a guy who lectures Hollywood about diversity, yet whose new movie doesn't feature one single black actor. He's a total hypocrite, and I'm sick of seeing his smug, self-satisfied face spewing out meaningless platitudes while the media makes out like he's Jesus f***ing Christ. Clooney once angrily lectured a journalist who called one of his movies boring. You make a lot of films yourself, yeah? I'd like to see you make a film before you get to talk about it. What a jerk, said Clooney. Well, I'd like to see you listen to the parents of women and children raped by Muslim migrants in Europe before you get to talk about it. I'd like to see you house a single Syrian refugee in one of your numerous palatial mansions before implying that we're all racist for expressing concern about the millions of Muslim migrants pouring into Europe. George Clooney is a total prick. Fuck George Clooney. I felt so good talking to Chris, Chris Tonto today. I mean, what a hero. Not just like taking on hundreds of guys and all the rest of it with a small team, but then having the courage when they threatened them to go public. I'm sorry, go on, Leanne, but I want, I want you to speak to that. No, next. well, and that's it. It's like, you're going to threaten me if I go public? Well, then I'm going to go. I mean, the guy risked his life. I mean, well, how what, are you going to threaten? That's what made me want to launch the, the hashtag handcuff Hillary. And, and I did this yesterday in honor of the fact that Chris would be coming on the show today with Alex and myself. And I was like, you know, we need to get more people involved with this. People need to, to see the evil that she is. We need to expose this woman for who she truly is. 
and by myself at 6.30 yesterday, I just started hitting hashtag handcuff Hillary, capital H, capital C, and capital H on the Hillary as well. And people started sending me in their pictures wearing this. So I wanna encourage each and every one of you right now watching this to get your Hillary for Prison t-shirt on, take a picture of it, and use the hashtag handcuff Hillary. And then also go on our site and find your favorite videos where we talk and expose the things that Hillary Clinton's done over the years. There's so much. And also go ha or hashtag handcuff Hillary and then put because of her war crimes, because of Vince Foster, because of this. And then link to the articles and videos. And link to our stuff. This is an InfoWars movement. We want to see the world awake. We want to see people have a discussion about how truly horrible of a human being she is. And she will see this. People in her campaign will get back to her. Everything will get in the news. If we make this big, if we get this in the hundreds of thousands and the millions of people tweeting about this, and you can, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to be just Twitter. You yeah. can use it on Facebook, you can use it on Instagram, Instagram, you can use it on all that. This will create a discussion. People will start writing articles, and this will force this right now into the into the public's eye, and we'll have to have another discussion. Is we can't we have to dethrone Hillary. We cannot let this right. person be able to run so, for president. And so here's the here's the theory behind this. And so what, what we want everybody to do is to is to use that, that hashtag handcuff Hillary, but underneath it you put your reason why. So you put ha you know handcuff Hillary because she didn't answer the phone at three AM during Benghazi. But then you personalize it. You take control of the narrative. Meanwhile let's see how you're funneling money through the country. Let's see your uh, your your speeches to selling billions in weapons so to the, other countries. So the exactly. point is, is it goes on and on and on and on. We want to see what you have. What dirt you can you can dig up. How big of a list can you add to it? <laughs> what are all the reasons why? Because we know there's a thousand of them. But you, exactly. know, you don't only have to use when you tweet this out, you can use multiple hashtags. So you can use hand, hashtag handcuff Hillary, hashtag InfoWars. Tonto Peranto, as he's known, former Ranger, 2nd Battalion, 75th Element. I don't want to go over his whole bio because he's only here with us a couple more segments. He's got to go. Um, security military consultant, hero of Benghazi attack. And I mean, the, he wrote the book, 13 Hours. It's based on that. And I couldn't believe Hollywood put something out that, according to people that I know, uh, that you know, know all these guys, and now we're talking to one of them themselves that wrote the book on it. It's very accurate from their perspective. I only had the perspective of Colonel Schaefer and Tosh Plumley and other Pentagon sources that within a week said, ordered, came down from the CIA. That was from the State Department. They had drones over it. Eight hours of firefights, hours before that to stand down. I mean, Hillary and Obama really think we're stupid. Let me ask Chris, who is a hero, because he has the will, not just to have courage physically, to, but to buck them saying shut up and lie, and a lot of other folks have had that courage, that moral courage. What do you think they were really doing there? Why are they covering it up so nakedly? Why do they think they could have a 13-hour stand down and not have the whole internal military structure learn of the treason? You know, I, it, it goes to arrogance, uh, the way I look at it. Uh, and you said it, you said it right there. Are they going to just lie and people going to believe it? Well, you know what? Half America did. Um, and that just goes arrogance. That goes how how our country is nowadays as well, where they would rather believe politicians than than seals and rangers and marines and, and military veterans. Uh, that's a sorry state we're in right now. Um, another reason, you know, there was an election going on. Terrorism was on the run, which it wasn't. <laughs> so, um, uh, you know, it comes out that there's a terrorist attack, and an ambassador of Chris Stevens' stature, great man, dies. You know, and, and Mitt Romney actually grabs his own, grabs himself there, and and is a man about it. He attacks Obama. He wins the election. So um, I, you know, there's a lot of different things. And then also just just overthrow Gaddafi was a mistake, to be honest with you. Um, and that was the State Department that pushed that. That was Hillary that pushed that. So that puts her in a bad light. There's so many different reasons that that uh, they wanted to spin the truth. Well, your um, your book is, what is it, a number one New York Times bestseller it, now? It, it has been several times, the hardback and the paperback both. And it's it's been on New York Times for Geez, I don't know, three years now. So off and on for the last three years. So you know, people want to know the truth. And the more they find out from folks like yourself, the more they find out from people coming forward. Trey Gowdy's committee actually, I think, is doing a good job. The more people go and pick up the book and they read what happened on the ground. And, and I, I'm glad people are doing that because they finally are listening to the guys that were on the ground that night and not politicians that were watching it on Facebook or social media. I just don't know how Hillary and Obama thought they'd get away with it. Joe Biggs, I mean, you've been in the military, you've been in combat, you got more experience interviewing this guy than I do, but it just seems crazy that they think they'd get away with this. Well, the thing is, is we have these reports coming out that the Air Force had these F-16s on standby fueling. They could have been there 
you know, as an air asset to cover these guys. And in the past, right, Chris, you guys had used some of these yeah. assets before in previous uh, missions. So it's really weird for me that all of a sudden, this time, this day, they weren't able to do it. You know, I talked to a Marine yesterday that has buddies that's part of a fast team that was ready yeah. to go in there and help out as well. And for some reason, everyone was told to stand down. Well, let's talk about that. Yeah, yeah. What and, I was and told that a week was, it was about letting the ISIS Al-Qaeda people, they weren't called ISIS then, get those warehouses, ship it into Syria, and have plausible deniability, and the ambassador wasn't going along. Is that accurate or inaccurate, Chris? You know what, and that's, that, that is a gray area. I don't know for sure. Uh, I'll be honest, I don't know for sure. I've heard the same things. Um, were there weapons moving around? Yeah, there were stockpiles of Gaddafi's weapons that were there that were out of, getting out of everybody's hands that we were trying to get. Um, so, but to, to say that there was a nefarious action going on, because because of my non-disclosure and maybe that answers your question right there because of my non-disclosure i i can't discuss a lot of that stuff well what um, about threats we know a lot of higher ups have been threatened people have been sanctions uh, uh just a lot of crazy things have happened they've talked about witness protection programs and things yeah i mean can you speak to the threats you know i, I the, a lot of it really was is passive aggressive threats I, I, it does take a lot of moral courage to actually step forward we lost our jobs because of it um, you know, you put your faith in God a little bit and say, you know, what's the right thing to do here? Well, the right thing to do is tell the truth. We lost our jobs. A lot of those people that were saved that night aren't doing the right thing. They don't have the moral courage. They're worried about their jobs. They're worried about finances, which, hey, I understand that. But there comes a time where you just got to step forward and say, you know what? I may lose my job here. I may be reprimanded. But the right thing is to tell the truth. And a lot of those people that were saved that night, they get to see their families. And, and I expected more from them as well. A lot of those guys out there, they're still working, that know what's going on and that aren't standing up and, and telling the actual truth of what took place there that night. So you had to do the right thing when you were ordered to stand down repeatedly and go and yes, fight sir. the uh, Al-Qaeda trash and then do the moral right thing again and go out and speak out and say, no, we're being lied to. We were ordered to stand down. Yes, sir. Uh, and luckily, I was with a fantastic team that night, and it carried over into, uh, into today. Uh, we stuck together as a team. When this first went down, we, you know, we continued to deploy, except for Oz. Oz had his arm severely injured, so he couldn't deploy, but the rest of us continued to go overseas. Right. Uh, after we were treated poorly for about eight months, uh, we decided as a team, we voted on it, and if everybody voted yes, we were going to tell the truth. If, if any one of us voted no, we would not say anything, and all of us unanimously said yes, we're going to tell the truth. So being able to stick together as a team sure. has, has been able to, to embolden us to get out there and, and well, tell I, the I, truth. I honestly just think it's amazing that you guys ended up having the courage to go out there and ignore the commands to stand down and go out there and finally fight and help those guys out. Because well, you guys were roughly, you got a call, it was like 9.47 p.m. to, uh, to stand and down. And there's, there's differences on that, too. I swear, and I've still got my watch. The call that we got was 9.32. I remember looking at my watch because I didn't want to get bothered. I, Joe, you know the deal at night. You know you don't want to get bothered when it's almost night. And you get called in the evening time. I looked at my watch, 9.32. We're ready to go by 9.37. And we were told to wait, stand down, then wait again. Uh, I don't think it takes moral courage. I don't think it takes courage to do that. It takes the ability to sacrifice yourself. It takes the ability wow. to give yourself I mean, for another human being. That's what it is. You I guys were courage. about, a, what, a mile and a half away from the Not ambassador. even that not what? even that far. Not three even quarter, that far. So when you guys went in, when you guys decided to, to just go anyways, you guys drove some of the way, right? And then you went on foot? Yeah. In, yeah and yeah. then you guys were encountering, you know, uh, that, resistance through there. So tell me about that. That was, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah but I mean, I mean, just in a snapshot, people should read the book. They should see the film. I'll be honest. At first, I was like, they claim this is non-political, so it better tell the truth. I hadn't read the book. I didn't know it was based on this book. I just kind of, you know, was reading the news. It was all about the director and stuff. And then mm -hmm. it came out, and I finally went and saw it. And I was like, wow, this is accurate from, from, from what the witnesses said. Oh, it's based on one of the heroes' books. Now I get it. Because I just don't trust Hollywood. And I don't get it because yeah, they bend no. over backwards for Hillary. 80% of the money in Hollywood has gone to Hillary. I'm really uh, proud of this director. And I'm proud of uh, the folks associated with it in Hollywood. I want to talk about that night briefly. But let's talk about some of the other heroes here, Chris, because they don't want sure. credit. But to have a free press and a free media, we need to give credit to protect these people because these are the real Americans. Who are some of the other folks that helped get this film out? Oh, you know, Michael Bay is outstanding. I, you know, he's the trans, he's a Transformer series. You know, Michael Bay Armageddon, Explosion, so forth. Autobots honestly, transforming role. Yeah, he, honestly, he was perfect for this because people don't realize he is a huge veteran supporter. Huge. He uses veterans on all his all his extras on his movie sets. Um, Michael Bay is a hero because he stuck his neck out there to do this. I and guarantee he, he got threatened. Us. I just know he did. I haven't heard that. Well, 
I bet she did too, but you know what? It's Michael Bay. What's he getting? They actually grabbed some Vara troops from El Paso at Fort Bliss yeah. to help out with the uh, Transformer movie. Well, well, we've only got about six, seven minutes left with our guests. And jump in, Joe, because you're more of an expert than I am with Chris here. Uh, Chris uh, Tanto, uh, hmm. what is the best website uh, for people to visit? Is it Chris Tanto uh, Peranto? Yeah, that's it. Uh, the Chris Tonto Peranto, Tanto Peranto. You know, Alex, you're white. I know. It's Tonto. It, <laughs> it was T-O-N-T-O, brother. Uh, the reason I made it Tonto, a T-A-N-T-O, because I, I'm, I'm Mexican, I'm Spanish. If it's T-O-N-T-O, yeah. Tonto, that means fool. So <laughs> so that's so. say it, Tanto, no big deal. Chris Tanto Peranto, T-A-N-T-O. So what is the right way to say it then? Ta it's Tonto. Talk right, to with, uh, uh, but you can say whatever you want. I hey, want to know where the Lone Ranger show. is in all this. <laughs> you guys were kind of the Lone Rangers that night, huh? Yeah, I, I was. I was actually the lone, the only Ranger on the team. There were two SEALs, three Marines, and I was the Lone Ranger. And, of course, I held the Marines and the SEALs together that night. I, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding all you SEALs and Marines. Rangers lead the way. All the way, brother. But, <laughs> but uh, no, it was it, it was a fantastic team. And, and Joe was right. The media doesn't tell you this. We stopped 400 meters short and had to fight our way on. It took us another 30 minutes. And how many hundreds of guys did you fight and kill? I mean, this was like you a, know, an Alamo scenario, but you ended up almost basically winning. Yeah, we, we, we did until they brought the mortars in, which we couldn't defend, which yeah. it would have been nice to have the Air Force there to help us with that, which I know they were trying. Um, we had any reports from 30 to 70, uh, but we, we never got an official count because at that time, Benghazi didn't happen. So, uh, but we, that's we at any one no time, idea. thirty to seventy, because some of the reports I read said that it was wave after wave. Yeah, no, and it was, it was. I mean, there was. Five, if people want to take care of how many, actually count to how many firefights were in that night, two at the consulate, and then three actually at our compound. So five firefights that night. So it it varied for anywhere from I'm seeing fifty, and you're seeing wave after wave. You're just you're just you're just shooting guys. Mark Meekin uh, again joins us. I believe he's in in Scotland. He can tell me where he's at. Uh, but but I know it was all over the you know, it's, it's it's Scotland. That's where the cops went and arrested him. Came to his house, and just the media with a straight face said, "Yeah, you don't make a video with your pug doing the Hitler salute." I made a video three years ago when they were banning the J.C. Penney teapot because someone thought it looked like Hitler. It's a silver colored teapot with a black handle. Looks nothing like Hitler, but but someone could see it. Like if you see Hitler in a cloud, do you ban that? And so I pointed out that my French bulldog captain. Uh, looks like he has a Hitler mustache. Will I be arrested? And if you're a TV viewer, there it is. Uh, the Hitler dog, ladies and gentlemen. And, and, and again, Captain doesn't mean it that he looks like Hitler. The question is, why did I pick him as a puppy? Maybe that shows my subconscious love for Hitler. Maybe I should be taken in interrogated like 1984 until I tell the truth. I mean, this is meant to be over the top. This is meant to where they can ban any speech they want, whenever they want, while our governments bring in radical jihadists, while they allow all these other d d disparate groups to come in and spew whatever anti-Semitic garbage, whatever they want. And quite frankly, I say if you're a citizen of a country, you got free speech, you can say it as long as you don't hurt somebody. But will there be purges of people that maybe look like Hitler or their dog looks like Hitler, or uh, 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 maybe people keep seeing Mary or Jesus in bagels and danishes. Uh, if someone sees Hitler, maybe in vines growing on your house, will you be arrested? And by the way, I'm not joking. That's what this is. When With the teapot and J.C. JCPenney, it, it, it's reaching that level where now people say, hey, let's get Mexican food. Let's go, don't say the word Mexican. Or let's go get Chinese. Don't say Chinese. I've seen it in Austin. People shout it down. Knowledge is now criminal, just like homosexual. They say that's a hateful word. Robin Page of the BBC was actually arrested a decade ago, a host of one man and his dog, because he said rural communities deserve the same rights as homosexuals and Mexicans or Muslims or anybody else. He listed a whole group of people. And ladies and gentlemen, because he said homosexual, he was arrested. Heterosexual, homosexual. Even if something's hurtful, you should be able to say it. But Facebook says no. So that's where all this is going, to shut down free speech, not to stop radicals or whatever, or extremists. We're going to go to our guest here in a moment. But first, here's Paul Watson uh, commenting on the viral video from Mark Meekin. We'll also give you uh, his YouTube channel and more if you want to see the thought crimes for yourself. But since then, tens of millions of views, hundreds of articles. Um, 
and I want to. And I, I was reading. He he said he was sorry. I I want to hear still if he thinks he's bad. I don't think he's bad. I, I think Mark's a funny guy. Uh, he may have bad taste in politics, but hey, that's his right. We're going to talk to him in a moment. But here's Paul Watson breaking it down. 28-year-old Marcus Meacham was arrested for hate crimes after posting this joke video of his girlfriend's dog reacting to Nazi slogans. My girlfriend is always ranting and raving about how cute and adorable her wee dog is. And so I thought I would turn him into the least cute thing that I could think of, which is a Nazi. Buddha, do you want gas the juice? <laughs> gas the juice? Jews. See, Kyle. <laughs> Jews. The video went viral, receiving 18,000 thumbs up to just 1,200 thumbs down. The vast majority of viewers thought that it was hilarious, but thanks to a small minority of perpetually offended retards, Meachin got a home visit from the Scottish. And then he got arrested. Well, All right, let's stop Paul's video right there. And again, Paul is pronouncing his name Meachin like I did. It's, it's, it's Meekin is how he likes it pronounced. And Mark Meekin uh, joins us. Mark, I, I tell you, I don't know if I can be associating with somebody like you. Uh, I mean, you got a guy fox mask behind you, too. If you kind of cut off the handlebar mustache and only left the middle, that'd be Hitler as well. Uh, do you yeah. want to, uh, I mean, are, are you really sad for what you did? Are you really sorry? Um. I feel, I, I feel in the long run I didn't do anything wrong. Um, it was clearly satire. It was clearly a joke. I wasn't setting out to cause any heart or offence to any people. If anything, I was wanting people to laugh. Um, just obviously it was taken the wrong way. That was all, really. Maybe you are a bad person. Maybe John Cleese should be arrested. Have you seen him do his Hitler spoofs that I think are probably, you could say, more distasteful than yours? Um, yeah, I've, I've seen the joke where he actually, you know, done the whole mustache thing and he even goose stepped out the room and things like that as well I've, I've seen all the jokes like that I've seen various jokes in relation to you know Nazis, Jews and things like that as well But, but it doesn't kinda... matter if England and the UK fought Hitler now you've got to take on Hitler's mantle do you want to apologise for Hitler right now? Um, it's not my duty to apologise for Hitler you know it wasn't my fault or anything like that do you want to apologise for Jar Jar Binks? Um, no I don't need to apologise for that no <laughs> You are wearing a Star Wars shirt. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. I'm not a Jar Jar Binks fan myself, no. That's because you're racist against uh, Caribbean lizards? Uh, no, <laughs> no, I'm not racist against Caribbean lizards either, no. <laughs> well, all right, now, Mark, we're starting to watch you a little closer. Actually, we may be onto something here. Getting serious, describe what the police did, what ended up happening. I mean, did they have straight faces? or I mean, how could they watch your pug, horrified by Hitler... Uh, I mean, that's a cute pug, by the way. I mean, yeah. what's what's the issue here? Um, well, they came to my house. Um, as soon as they arrived, they said, I'm sure you know why we're here. They explained why they're here and everything. And I was, I let them in. Um, they explained the situation that it's being classed as a hate crime. And then they just basically said, well, we're here to arrest you. Um, they let me get changed and stuff like that. But while I was getting changed, they were going around my house. They were taking photos of everything in my house. And stuff like that as well. They were like taking photos of like the wall behind me and everything like that as well. Was, are they like social justice warriors themselves? They thought they had like a thought criminal on their. I mean, how were they behaving? Were they taking this serious? And they were taking it serious. Yeah. Um, they basically, they, some of the things that they were saying to me as well was uh, one of the officers uh, felt that the video could actually promote uh, hatred towards Jews. They thought it actually promoted Nazi culture, and they feel it could actually inspire people to hate Jews instead of just see it as a piece of satire, which is what it was. <laughs> Have you heard, it's actually in mainstream news, that they're now hiring former Stasi commanders in Germany to list people criticizing open borders and the German are, uh, police are arresting them? I, I mean, this is starting to get scary. Yeah. Yeah, it's just that... It just sort of feels that... I understand that there are certain things that we ha actually have to arrest people for and certain things that should be regarded as crimes. I don't think hurting someone's feelings is a crime. It's not a crime in any sense. No, it's never it's been under common law, Magna Carta, or anything else in the West. But in Saudi Arabia, it is. If you, uh, you know, a woman goes out without a hood on her head, they can kill her because that hurts her husband's feelings. And the left seems to ally with those folks. L l let me ask you this question: Where, where are you now? Are you still charged? Are they still proud of themselves? Uh, are they going to arrest John Cleese? I mean, is there an arrest warrant out for him? 
No, um, as far as I, as far as I know, the police haven't spoken to me since then. I was arrested. I was kept in jail overnight. Um, then I was kept in jail for court and for the next day. Um, just before I was due to go to court, I was granted what's called procurator fiscal liberation, which means the procurator fiscal decided to release me. Um, this can either be a case of uh, they didn't feel like they had enough evidence to actually bring the well, charge. Well, sure, but against sir, you, that's a false arrest. And under Magna yeah. Carta, common law, and the Scottish Constitution, uh, you are doing serious restoration. This is a civil rights violation. And if you don't get, see, the reason people in the UK are so bullied is you're so friendly, you're so nice. And, and you have to stand up for everybody's rights, sir. I think you really should bring legal action against them uh, because th there aren't thought crimes last time I checked. Um, well, I thought that as well, but obviously, and until all this, you know. No, I mean, it's the police that need to be arrested. Seriously. Yeah. A lot of a lot of people were kind of finding it funny because the police thought the video itself was offensive. They thought it was going to promote, you know, hatred of Jewish people and things like that as well. But instead, all the arrest did was actually drew even more and more attention towards the video itself. Like because it's ever since, yeah. The arrest, obviously, I mean, are you out to get Jews? I mean, even if you were, it's your free speech. But I mean, are you out to get Jews? I mean, you come off as no. a big leftist on your side. No, I, I don't hate anyone. I don't hate any creed or race or anything like that at all. Yeah, no, I mean, it's very stylish in Trendyville, and I'm not saying you're a bad guy. You are you are very funny, <laughs> trendy, and you're actually a talented guy to be outrageous, correct? I mean, that's kind of the style right now. As short, short comedy is kind of what I do. I make a lot of offensive jokes. I, I laugh about terrible things and stuff like that as well, but it is all satire, and I don't really... No, I get me. it. I mean, that's all the rage at any big comedy club. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. It kind of seems though you need, actually need to have your job listed as comedian, though, to, you know, get away with it. Well, that's it for our show tonight. I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again next week.